Hi guys. Hope you're having a great day. Um, unfortunately, you're not going to be able to see me because I'm using a different uh, program called Screencastify. I tried all day yesterday afternoon to do a webcam uh, recording of um, this discussion and it didn't work. It recorded, but when I was flipping through the various sections of Canvas, it just wouldn't it wouldn't um, record those, so um, I just kind of wasted about four hours trying to mess with that. So we'll do it this way. Hopefully this will work and will provide you guys with some information that you'll find useful. In class on Monday, we talked about personal financial statements, specifically personal balance sheet and also an income statement or a cash flow statement. So here's an example. Um, and, and these numbers in this example of this family, Victor and it says Marion, but it should be Maria Hernandez. Um, so this is a uh, an example of their balance sheet. And let's go through that. Um, as with any balance sheet, whether that's a business balance sheet or personal balance sheet, it really is made up of, of three different sections. So this is the asset section and the assets are broken into three basic categories, monetary assets, um, which is made up of uh, cash and what's in your savings, checking accounts, any type of refunds that are coming in or uh, rent receivable, tangible assets. So that's your stuff, your home, your personal property, the things in your home and autos investment assets. Uh, so this couple is pretty well invested in a lot of different things from mutual funds to IRAs to real estate. So you add up those three components of the uh, asset category and you have total assets and they're at 372, 620. Then on the other side of the equation, we have liabilities and those liabilities are debts what you owe and that's broken into short term and long term short term is less than a year and long term is um, a year or more so here we have a couple of short-term liabilities credit card uh, debt and the dentist debt and this is all uh, based on um, a single point in time and that's kind of the unique thing about a balance sheet you can do a balance sheet today um, and it's going to show a set of numbers and in a week from now it'll be totally different so this just keep in mind that a balance sheet is just a snapshot of what your uh, ultimately what your net worth is um, at that particular point in time all right so uh, long-term um, liabilities they have uh, car payment um, or car obligation and um, mortgage and so that's your total long-term liabilities you add the short term and the long term and you have your total liabilities or your total debt and then um, you subtract the uh, liabilities from the assets and you come up with your net worth so their net worth is 271 um, if you add up the debt and the net worth that should equal the total assets. That's why it's called a balance sheet because those um, items will always balance. So the total, the, your assets um, uh, will equal your liabilities plus your net worth. Now there's um, a couple of uh, balance sheet ratios. And the cool thing about ratios is it can really help you determine where you're at uh, it provides a, a little report card and um, probably what's most important is not so much whether or not these ratios how they stack up against where you uh, should be kind of like the um, you know standard levels that you should be at or, or better at um, but really just kind of measuring where you're at and then you know checking that every six months or one year or um, just to see kind of how you are doing. Are you improving your numbers? 
um, are you getting worse and, and what are the reasons for that? So these ratios can kind of help you see where you're at. So it's like a report card on your financial health. So one thing to check out is your asset to debt ratio. So in this particular case, all we would do to determine that ratio is take the, um, the total uh, asset uh, amount, which is the 372, and you divide that by the total liabilities, which is the 101, 365, to get a number of 3.68. So what does that mean? That means that you have 3.68 times more assets uh, than debt. Now you can also flip this around and do a debt to asset ratio. So you would just flip flop those numbers and believe you'd come to uh, 0.27 or 27%. So 27% of your assets are indebted. So you have 27% debt um, when compared to your assets. So, so that's another way to, to take a look at it. So either way, um, it's still a pretty good measure. So is this 3.68 number a good number? Um, yeah, it's a pretty good number. The higher the number, the, the better. Um, but I'd say three to six uh, is good. Uh, and again, if you're doing an asset to debt ratio, that's just um, showing um, the number of um, assets that you have as compared to your, your debt. The other uh, balance sheet ratio that you could take a look at is the investment assets to total assets. So investment assets, um, the uh, Hernandez family, they're doing pretty good, or actually maybe even um, have too much invested in investment um, assets because that's 45%. So you just take the total assets that they have invested and you divide that into the total assets to come up with that that number, that ratio, or that percentage. So it's 45.45 or 45%. Um, and again, is that a good number? Well, it kind of depends what stage you are in life. I'd say if you're in your 20s, uh, a good number to shoot for is about 10%. And as you get older, you probably want that percentage to be higher. You're earning more. Hopefully, you have more disposable income and are able to um, invest. Um, those dollars. So, so say, you know, 10% uh, in your 20s and your 30s, maybe, you know, 15 to 20, 25% in your 40s, maybe even higher. So these guys are at 45%, just depending on how old they are and what their retirement um, situation is. You know, maybe they have so much invested uh, right now because they're making up for, you um, retirement. Um, maybe they didn't start off saving very much or investing and now they're trying to make up for it. So there could be a lot of different reasons for that. So anyways, those are a couple of balance sheet ratios. Now I'll switch over to the income statement or the cash flow statement. And this was um, a, a total recap of where they stand between January 1 and December 31. So it's a, a full year uh, cash flow statement. Um, so with a cash flow statement, you're going to have what's coming in. So income wise, so here we have their salaries, uh, interest and dividends that they've earned, bonuses, tax refunds, uh, any type of rental income. So all that is calculated to uh, come up with a total income. And then expenditures, so money flowing out. And that's usually split up into a couple categories, fixed expenses. These were all the items in the, the fixed expense category. Total that up, then you have variable expenses, things like gas and maintenance and clothing and upkeep and um, just miscellaneous uh, items. Um, so you calculate the total variable, you come up with total expenses, and you um, compare that to the total income that you're bringing in. So all you're doing is, is comparing the cash coming in to the cash going out. And hopefully at the end of the year, you have a surplus. You have more coming in than you have going out. 
And in this particular case, this matched exactly. So they spent exactly what they brought in. So they have no surplus or deficit, which is highly unlikely. But um, yeah, so you know, if you have a surplus, if you have, um, let's say they earned $92,000 in income, total income, and they had $89,000 in expenses, then they'd have a surplus of $3,000 that they would carry over into the following year. Uh, if it went the other way, if they um, brought in 89, but their expenses were 91, then they'd be in the hole of 2,000 and um, would have uh, a, you know, a deficit going into the following year. All right, so let's take a look at some, some ratios. This is called a liquidity ratio, and this can determine um, how much uh, cash or monetary assets you have available to cover your expenses. So we have to take a look at our balance sheet in order to come up with the total amount of monetary assets that 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 um, that they have, and they have nine thousand one hundred and twenty dollars. So you take the ninety one twenty, and you divide that into their um, expenses, and their expenses turned out to be eighty nine thousand, right? But we wanted to um, come up with a, a monthly uh, number, um, so we divided that by twelve. So their monthly expenses are um, about seventy four hundred seventy dollars. So seven thousand four hundred and seventeen dollars. So you take the monetary assets and you divide that by their monthly um, expenses. And we have a number of 1.23. So what that means is they have 1.23 times um, the monetary assets um, uh, covering their expenses. So um, it's just a little bit more than what their monthly expenses are. Um, and that's probably... A little scary because, um, and it's interesting because they had 45% in investment assets, but from a monetary asset standpoint, they don't have a lot, a 91.20. So that's barely enough to cover one month's expenses. A, a good number to have is uh, a minimum of three. So say three to six, the higher the number, the better, because that shows you um, really how long you could last if all of a sudden the income wasn't coming in and um, you had to still cover your monthly expenses. And, and so that's a good indication of how long you'd be able to last on the monetary assets that you have without borrowing any money. So in this particular case, it's just, you know, one month and, and a quarter. So like six weeks, not even six weeks. Um but if that was up to um, uh, three, so if this was you know twenty five thousand or thirty thousand, um, then you would have uh, you know three and a half, four times the um, um, the monetary assets in order to uh, cover your expenses. So that's just a good ratio to show you where you're at in terms of um, your liquidity. Liquidity just means the ability to, um, uh, you know, uh, access cash, and uh, and and as we said, uh, th this is uh, probably not a great position for them to be in. All right, so your uh, debt to income ratio just measures your um, um, major debt, and usually that. Uh, consists of mortgage uh, or rent payments and um, any type of uh, 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 car payment or any type of uh, outstanding loans that you have. So, in other words, just your major major debt as compared to your total income. So, for these guys, they have a mortgage yearly uh, mortgage payment of fourteen four. And then they have car payments of 4400 So you add that together, and that's the 18 8 
divide that into the income for 21 and then multiply that times 100 in order to get a percentage. So that would be 21%. So what this shows is they have um, debt of 21%. So, um, you know, is that, is that good? Um, yeah, that's pretty good. Uh, the book uh, says uh, or recommends anything less than 36. Um, I would reduce that to anything less than 30. So they're at 21. So um, that's pretty good. Another ratio is the uh, debt payments to disposable uh, income. So this would be uh, measuring the non-monthly uh, um, uh, mortgage uh, debt and uh, um, loan outstanding loan debts. Um, so these guys are doing pretty good. The only thing they have outstanding is, um, let's see here. 3,600. So the only thing they have is the uh, car payment of 36 or 366.67. And you divide that into the what's called the disposable income, which is your total income minus federal, state, local taxes, social security taxes, medical insurance. Um, and then what you have left is called the disposable income. In this particular case, that's 5242. Um, and um, you get that by dividing that total disposable income by 12 in order to get a monthly number, which is 5242. So you have the debt payment. Um, and the only thing that they have is the auto payment, uh, monthly auto payment of 366.67. You divide that into the disposable income for 6.99, so it's less than seven, which is a, this is uh, a percentage. So their debt payments to disposable income is um, less than seven percent, which is really good. A good number to shoot for is anything less than 14 percent. So overall, um, they're looking pretty good in terms of their debt. And um, so they're in good shape there. The only concern that, that I would have with these guys is their liquidity. Um, they don't have a lot of cash on hand. And if something you know blew up, then um, they'd have to go out and borrow, which you know um, they're in a good situation to borrow because they don't have a lot of debt. So anyways, that's um, a... Uh, a couple of examples of personal financial uh, statements, and um, hopefully that was helpful to give you an idea um, what you can do to kind of keep track of, of these numbers and to provide um, some relevancy by looking at the different types of ratios that you can come up with in order to determine how, how you're doing. I wanted to mention that with the homework assignment, for those of you who still haven't been able to get the book, I just posted the actual problems from the book. I just took a picture of uh, the problems and posted them. So if you haven't been able to get to the do the math problems, that's okay. Um, I've just posted those problems um, in Canvas so you can take a look at that. If you don't have the book, um, give it a shot. Try to do it on your own. Do some of these, um, these ratios. And then we'll go over that on um, Friday. All right. So I will see you guys live on Friday via WebEx. And certainly let me know if you guys have any questions about um, the assignment or um, uh, anything at all. We'll also take a look at um, the uh, sample budget um, that I use so that you have an idea of um, the budgeting process, at least what, what I go through. Have a good one and be safe.